2018 will go down in history as one of the worst years in my life. But I don't want to be negative today, because as much as I would love to rant about how much I hate paying rent, instead, we're going to be positive today, because there's been some great stuff that I did experience this year. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd, the show we love talking about positive stuff too. Forget about Fallout 76, forget about Fallout 76, forget about Fallout 76. Hey, yo, I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Sunday. Happy Sunday. If you're new around here, Sunday's not quite a day in the Your Everyday Nerd schedule yet. Look forward to that happening starting in February. But before we get back to our regular scheduled programming in the new year, 2019, I wanted to take a moment to talk about my favorite things of 2018. Last year, I did a top 10 games of the year and a top 10 movies of the year. And I thought about doing the same this year, but I didn't really play that many new games in 2018. And unfortunately, I also didn't get a chance to go to the movie theaters as much as I had wanted to. So instead, I recently started following a guy on YouTube by the name of Super Eyepatch Wolf. And every year he does a video called My Favorite Things of this particular year. And I love the concept so much because it promotes a lot of positive things that don't necessarily fit within a certain top 10 list. So today, I want to share with you some of my favorite things of 2018, whether it's movies or games, music or anime, or even some arbitrary thing that I haven't talked about before. Let's keep things positive today before I go off on to some of my most disappointing things of 2018 video, which will be later this week. Happy face. See, this is a happy face. 2018 was the first year that I dove headfirst into the film industry. We've all seen movies growing up, but I never thought about having a love for film because a lot of the movies that I saw growing up were trash. You know, the kids' movies, the family movies, the dumb comedies you see on Hallmark. Like, a lot of these movies are pretty bad. But I've heard that there's a lot of good movies out there, so I pushed myself to see more movies this year, and I saw a total of 57 films this year, which is way more films than I've seen in like the last 10 years. So while all of these movies aren't exactly a 2018 film, I do want to share with you some of my favorites that I saw this year. 2018 was the first year that I took the time to watch every single Best Picture nomination from the Oscars. I got to go to a theater and watch all nine of them spread across three days, and it was a very awesome experience. Of the nine nominations, my favorite by far was Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I went into this film knowing absolutely nothing about it and walked out of it absolutely adoring it. Three Billboards is about a mother who just lost her daughter to terrible circumstances. She was raped and murdered. After the police essentially stop investigating the crime, this mother pays for three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri to get the police chief's attention. This film not only has incredible acting performances from Frances McDormand, Sam Rockwell, and Woody Harrelson, but its writing is exceptional to the point where you think you know where the story is going to go, and then it just completely goes out of left field, leaving you speechless and sad and confused. And yet it also handles comedy within these dark moments so well that I found myself laughing out loud multiple times. If there's any film within the last few years that you should see, it's definitely Three Billboards. The film that ended up winning Best Picture this year, though, was The Shape of Water, which is my second favorite movie out of the nominees, but still such a masterpiece. Following the life of a mute woman, The Shape of Water features a fantastical world where the government has found a fish-like man in South America. When the woman, played by Sally Hawkins, meets this fish man, they connect on a level that neither of them have ever felt before. Guillermo del Toro does such a wonderful job of creating a fairy tale like world that captures you in the moment while also presenting a story that can only be described as breathtaking. The acting from Sally Hawkins is some of the best I've ever seen. The soundtrack is something I'm still listening to because of how beautiful it is and the ending is so good even though it is a little bit confusing. While I like Three Billboards more, The Shape of Water definitely deserved its win. But my personal favorite film this year was a lesser known indie motion picture, you've, you've probably heard it, maybe you have it, titled The Avengers Infinity War. I honestly don't know what I could say about this movie that everybody else hasn't already said. The culmination of 10 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe led to this movie that I honestly can't describe without calling it an event. 
I did have a few reservations about this film before it came out, but after seeing it in theaters on opening night, and then going back the second day and seeing it again, I just sat there amazed at how well it was put together. Sure, I have some very minor nitpicks about it, but that's only because I've seen this movie at least six times, and yet I still love everything about it. In February, I decided to make a funny video about an awful rom-com, so I looked around, tried to find a really bad rom-com, but I went into a movie that ended up instead being my favorite rom-com of all time. 500 Days of Summer was a 2009 film directed by Mark Webb, and it tells the story about Tom, a guy who falls in love with Summer, but doesn't end up with her at the end of the film. It's a beautifully written story told in a non-chronological timeline, which adds to the charm of its characters while also making the comedy very unique to the genre. Its soundtrack is great, it has an iconic scene called Expectations vs. Reality, which easily makes the film even better. A lot of film studies actually study this scene. And most importantly, it impacted me personally. After watching 500 Days of Summer, I sat there in thought and realized that this little 2009 film gave me closure for a past relationship. And for that, it was one of my favorite movies that I saw this past year. When it comes to a few friends of mine, I've always heard of this movie called Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And yet, I had never taken the time to see it. Finally, I watched it in all its glory. And I have to say, it was definitely a highlight of 2018 for me. Finally, being able to hear those jokes that I've only heard reference for the past 10 years was awesome enough, but for those jokes to actually be funny and hold up in 2018 was even better. There's not much that I can say about Monty Python except that it's a great comedy and I'm looking forward to a rewatch. Winning Best Picture in 2015, Birdman is a dark comedy surrounding a washed up superhero actor who is working on a Broadway adaptation of a famous short story collection. While the plot is definitely interesting and well written, and I love the confusing yet thought provoking ending, it's the direction and filmmaking aspects that made me love this one so much. Whether it's the minimalistic approach to the soundtrack featuring only a drum set, or the fact that the entire movie feels like it was done in one take, paired with the great acting of most of the cast, especially Michael Keaton and Edward Norton, Birdman is a film that's both enjoyable and mesmerizing. I'm a musician, so usually I try to keep up with musical trends and I'm always exploring new stuff out there, but this year I kind of stayed reserved and only listened to a handful of albums, while mainly listening to the soundtracks of movies and games while I worked. With that being said, there are a few albums and tracks that I absolutely loved this year. One of my favorite artists, J. Cole, released his album K.O.D. earlier in 2018. While it's not my favorite J. Cole album, I still very much enjoy listening to it. Overall, the concept of the album has a few different messages that I really enjoy, with its overarching message tackling addiction and self-worth. Cole does a great job addressing a lot of his inner demons while giving advice to hip-hop's newest success stories. Not only does the album work as a whole, but I can listen to every single track on its own without feeling obligated to listening to the whole album. My favorite tracks are Photograph, Kevin's Heart, 1985, and Brackets, and I'm excited to see what J. Cole puts out in this upcoming year. I listened to quite a few hip hop albums this year. That was really the genre of choice for me. But my other favorite is the Black Panther soundtrack produced by Kendrick Lamar, my favorite hip hop artist. Not only was it awesome to see my love of Marvel comics and my love of hip hop combine into one piece of entertainment, but the Black Panther soundtrack has some really great tracks on it too. If I had to pick favorites, I've listened to Ops, King's Dead, and X a ton in the past year. I didn't listen to a whole lot of rock this year, but my favorite rock album comes from an indie band called Tanuki with their debut feature album, The Fire, The Fear, and The Fall. Originally making music inspired by the video game Dark Souls, this album is fully about their own personal experiences. The lyrics are some of the best writing I've heard in the rock genre for a while now, and the instrumental work is fantastic as well. Unfortunately, the band is only made up of two members, one of them that just dropped out, so from now on it'll only be one guy doing all the work, so I have a feeling that it's going to be a while before we hear new music from them, but I'd highly recommend listening to Tanuki. They were previously known as Tanuki Suit, and they have two EPs out by that name that I'd also recommend listening to as well. My guilty pleasure album of the year was Ariana Grande's Sweetener. I've been listening to Ariana for the past few years now, and her extremely talented voice is what keeps bringing me back for more. While I don't like exactly every track on Sweetener, there are plenty of bops on the album, along with a few that also have some incredible lyrics. My favorites are Breathe In, Get Well Soon, and Successful. 
But now it's time for video games. I played exactly three 2018 games this year. One of them, which will be on my most disappointing list, but the other two were really great. The follow-up to 2015's big hit, Undertale, was a one-chapter demo to Toby Fox's newest game, Deltarune. Deltarune has the same charm as Undertale has, while improving on its already great combat system, incorporating new characters and bringing back old characters, all of which are still extremely well written, and also giving a story that isn't exactly easy to explain, because we're not going to get a lot of our questions answered until Toby Fox is able to finish the game. Which hopefully happens within the next 10 years, because for a one chapter demo, it was my favorite game this year. The other game that I played from 2018 was Mega Man 11. You'd think after 10 sequels, there's no way they'd be able to improve on the classic Mega Man franchise. And yet, number 11 ended up being the biggest improvement in the entire series. With a double gear system that allows you to briefly become stronger or faster, longer stages with great level design, and some of the best and most unique and memorable boss fights in the series, Mega Man 11 will probably end up being my favorite Mega Man game. While these are the new games that I loved in 2018, I also played some older games that I have never played before. Journey, the 2012 PlayStation 3 game, is a shorter experience that's completely worth playing through. While it lacks a bit in the gameplay department, it does a great job of showcasing a beautiful world with a beautiful soundtrack. This is a game that's kind of hard to explain because it's better for you to just sit down, budget out a couple of hours one afternoon, and go on this journey. I also finally played 2016's Doom. It's the most metal game I've ever played, featuring a kick-ass soundtrack and a visually pleasing atmosphere. Whether you like the first-person shooting genre or not, it's still a very fun time. And finally, in the gaming world, I fell in love with two games that I've always held an appreciation for, but never got into as much as I did in 2018. Guitar Hero and Tetris. With the creation of Clone Hero, which is basically a free-to-play Guitar Hero on your PC, I was able to completely up my game from, yeah, I can dominate some tracks on hard mode every once in a while, to playing some of the hardest tracks out there and enjoying every single thing about it. And not only have I played a ton of it, I was able to get into the community, enjoying content from some of the best Guitar Hero players in the world, like a Psy, and talking up Guitar Hero with my friend Marjag. But while Guitar Hero was something that I pushed myself to get better once every couple of weeks, I pushed myself even harder in NES Tetris. This was the first year that I really fell in love with NES Tetris and its community. I watched the documentary Ecstasy of Order, I watched the finals of every single classic Tetris World Championship, I interacted with Jonas Neubauer and Joseph Sally, two of the best Tetris players in the world on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter, and even more so, I've played at least a round of Tetris almost every single day this year, pushing my high scores to more than double what it was last year, and being able to play on level 18 and 19 consistently, when before 2018, I couldn't even play on level 10 consistently. And with that, one of my favorite moments in gaming this year was seeing 16-year-old Joseph beat 7-time champion Jonas at the CTWC Finals. The gameplay was some of the best this year, and I'm really excited to see how this community will be next year, and hopefully within the next couple of years, I can go compete at the exact same tournament. Along with movies, I also watched more television shows this year. One of the first shows that I watched that I also really enjoyed was The End of the Effing World. Based on an indie short comic book, this was a British dark comedy drama that follows James, a 17 year old who believes he's a psychopath, and Alyssa, a classmate who uses James as an escape to the rest of the world. This show gets wild. <laughs> James has decided that he wants to kill a person, so he picks Alyssa. They both end up running away together and hijinks ensues. I don't want to spoil any of it, so I would just recommend watching it yourself. The other show that I've really enjoyed this year is CW's The Flash. It went from a show that I've heard about, about a comic book character that I know nothing about, to one of my favorite shows of all time. The Flash does a good job of balancing superheroics with character drama, introducing complex characters and really awesome storylines. I watched the entirety of its four seasons on Netflix and I'm currently caught up on its newest season. We still have two weeks before the new episode comes out. And I couldn't be more excited. Moving from TV to anime, this was the first year in a while that I dove headfirst back into the anime scene. And I have to say, it was a great time to do so. 
While I didn't jump back into anime until around September, I did get a chance to watch a few great shows. Cells at Work is a series all about the inside of our bodies. Most people describe it as Osmosis Jones, the anime without the fart jokes, and I think that's an apt description. It features some great characters, very interesting dynamics to explain things that happen in our body like heat stroke and allergies, and it even has an episode dealing with cancer in one of the most original ways anything has ever dealt with cancer. Next up was Zombieland Saga, a show about zombie idols. Yes, cute girls dancing and singing, they just so happen to be dead. On the surface, this is a great idol anime, featuring numerous times where the music is really good, along with even a couple of music parodies, but the show also has some great comedic timing, along with some of the most heartfelt moments in anime this year. The thing that I'm most excited about is that they kind of left it open for a second season, so I'm really hoping that that happens. But my favorite anime this year is by far a show that I've talked about a couple of times already on the channel, and that's Rasko Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. It's easily one of the most beautiful anime I've ever seen. Everything about it from its characters to the soundtrack to the supernatural angle that the show uses to deal with common problems that teenagers deal with. It's a must watch for anybody, whether you're a fan of anime or not. And the last segment that I wanted to talk about is internet culture. While originally I used YouTube as a way to make videos of entertainment that I enjoyed, I have realized that over the past year, the most of my entertainment is not movies, it's not games or books or music, it's YouTube. I watch more YouTube than anything else, whether it's for educational purposes, to learn something new in an editing program, or just strict entertainment. It's just amazing how much of 2018 I spent on this platform. So here are just a handful of my favorite things on YouTube in 2018. Ralph the Movie Maker, a film reviewer and movie maker, it's in the name, made quite a few great videos this year, but my favorite was his Love on a Leash review, where he talked about one of the worst movies ever made. It was so funny and it made me so intrigued that I went ahead and watched this movie myself and then showed it to some friends. Yeah, he was right. The movie's awful, but this video was also hilarious. Ralph also released his first feature film, Lover, a minimalist film about two people who have a strange relationship, and if I said anything more, I'd be spoiling it for you. He just released this not too long ago on Amazon Video, so I'd highly recommend going and checking that out. My favorite comedy series on YouTube by far was the Game Grumps 10 Minute Power Hour. I've never laughed at something so much every single week. These simple videos of Aaron and Dan and sometimes guests just doing random things and sometimes pretty much nothing had me laugh more than anything else this year. This is probably the only series on YouTube that I can 100% re-watch multiple times and still enjoy it as much as the first time. One of my favorite channels this year was Scott the Wise. I found Scott last year through a recommendation of my friend Aiden, and Scott just barely had a few thousand subscribers then. Now he has over 400,000 subscribers, and he absolutely deserves it. Scott brings a unique humor to video game review videos, and he's one of the inspirations that I had for Your Everyday Nerd. He doesn't necessarily cover the same topics that everybody else has, and he's not afraid to go out of the box and talk about something like E3 1997 just because he wants to. He also puts out a video every single week of high quality, which is not something you see that often. He recently did his episode 100, which is a collab filled special that's not really that easy to describe, but definitely something you should watch. Oh, and also, I'm featured in the video through a Twitter thing, so that was really cool. As a follow-up to his massively successful video about Flex Tape, John Tron recently released a Flex Tape 2 video, and it's one of the best productions on YouTube. He was able to work with the actual company and create this meta, almost short film that's just as hilarious, if not more so than the original video. It's incredible the amount of talent that we have on this platform, and it's awesome to see JonTron still put out such great videos after all these years. My favorite event on YouTube has got to be the war between PewDiePie and T-Series. It's been incredible seeing the YouTube community rally behind PewDiePie to push his subscriber count even further just so that we don't have a faceless corporation as the most subscribed channel on YouTube. I've really enjoyed PewDiePie's content over the past couple of years, so while he won't be on the top forever, this was still a very fun event to be a part of for sure. A collaboration almost as big as Infinity War was the podcast Sardonicast, featuring movie reviewers Ralph the Movie Maker, Adam from Your Movie Sucks, and Alex from I Hate Everything. 
Every two weeks, these guys get together to discuss a couple of films and topics within the film community, and it's easily one of my favorite podcasts this year. Another creator that I found this year is Exerbia. His channel can only be described as having an existential crisis while also laughing at it. Each of his videos are some of the most unique content I've ever seen before. It's mainly philosophy, but it's mixed in with his comedy and his unique narration. It's almost like you're hearing someone talk about a fantasy world, except he's talking about Earth or Earth in the future. It, every single video doesn't really tell you what it's about, but I binged the entirety of his channel and I could really just recommend every single one of his videos. I wanted to give a brief nod to the app TikTok. Um, I've never laughed at a social media app more in my life. It, it really is Vine too, everybody. The memes on here are so creative and then they get really stale, but they're still funny sometimes. If you want to watch anything about TikTok and not have to wade through all the garbage, I'd recommend PewDiePie's series on it. There's a lot of funny stuff in there. And uh, yeah, go follow me on TikTok. <laughs> And finally, I just want to share with you the rest of my favorite creators this year. These are the channels that I watch almost every single upload for, and I'd be remiss to not include them on a favorites list of 2018. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Look at 290 Day coming at you live once again for the power of the internet. And If you take a look at Top 50 Music, for example, you'll see that most artists go through the same process to come up with their songs, which is step one, make sure you can sing or play an instrument. Step two, get your heart broken. It's the weekend right now, I'm in my studio. Ooh, we just get so swamped around the holidays. Growing up, I always wondered what my superpower would be. Hello, I'm Carl Sagan Salvia. You had this, and you had this. Of course, there were some hidden gems. Spaghetti was pretty good. I am not a one-trick pony. You think I'm gonna keep showing up and explaining the same three cheap After Effects tricks for the rest of my life? No, sir. Classic may have called it a book fair to get past the FBI, but what's up everybody? My name is Jay the Zoomster. And That's right. I have devised a statistical, analytical, number crunching formula. What is up everybody? This is Chris from the Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And 2018 is gonna go down as a bittersweet year for Spider-Man fans. What's up everybody? It's, it's Indie Mouse, and no, this isn't a gaming video. This is something completely different. Well, Nintendo, you did it. Not only did you forget Boss Baby, you forgot everybody. Nobody is here. That should have been the tagline. Yeah. They actually did. Yeah, MGS3, there's the Ape Escape Yes, mode. there is. <laughs> the Fine Bros have gone way too far this time. Today's episode, John was right again, and The Verge did an oopsie. Y'all know I had to do it to him. Two creatures of the game room embark on an epic quest. Like, people don't like pain. It's why most people don't have six packs. People of YouTube, it is I, Emperor Lemon. And last but not least, one of my favorite things of 2018 has been this channel. It's really been a rough year, full of self-awareness, making decisions that I never thought I would make, and even unfortunate circumstances that were entirely out of my control that I'm still dealing with. It was a growing year in many ways, but I do believe that this year set a foundation on this channel. With the creation of Your Everyday Nerd, I've been able to create a show that allows me to be creatively fulfilled with a format that I can evolve and continue to create even better videos. It allows me to make the content that I want to make while also pleasing the YouTube algorithm. It's a show that's digestible without giving up a certain amount of quality, and it's something that I'm still super excited about. And of course, my last favorite thing, my real last favorite thing about 2018 has been you guys. The support that I've received this year has been absolutely incredible. I've gotten more subscribers on the channel than I ever have in my entire life and any of my other channels. It's, it's insane. I've seen so much support from you guys on Discord. I've had some of the best friends in my life over the past year that, that have supported me an incredible amount. I want to give a quick shout out to Aiden from Blue Couch Productions and Jay from Jay the Zoomster. These guys have really been like my go-tos when I want to 
Vin about YouTube or Vin about client work and being a freelancer or Vin about life. Like these have been the guys that I've really been able to kind of like bond with over the year the most just because they understand where I'm coming from. They're kind of going in their own journeys with the YouTube stuff and everything like that. And it, I just really appreciate them. So I wanted to shout them out a little bit as well. Plus, I really like their content. I'm excited to see what they're going to do in 2019. Shout out to everybody in the Discord. Like seriously, you guys have been awesome. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Shout out to everybody that's still watching the channel. Everybody that's been turning into your everyday nerd every single day. It's been incredible. I'm so excited to see how this channel is going to turn out in 2019. I honestly do believe that 2018 was a building year. I had to set a new foundation. I made some of my favorite content of all time like this year. and. I, I can't wait to see how 2019 is going to be. I really can't. I know that the beginning of 2019 is still going to be rough because I'm still going through personal stuff and I know it's going to take a while for me to like really get in there. But I, I do think, I think 2019 is the year. I think 2018 was a foundation and 2019 is the year for this channel. And I'm super excited to see that happen. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, click that like button. If you disliked it, then fine. I'm gonna be disliking a bunch of shit on Friday anyways with my most disappointing <laughs> my most disappointing things 2018. I'm really excited for that too. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're new here on Your Everyday Nerd. And I'll see you tomorrow because we're gonna be starting a brand new week. And um we're gonna pff, we're gonna try to pump out the episodes in 2019. You just get ready. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.